morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, my name is Tyler Jacks. I'm the director of the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT, and it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you to the 10th annual Koch Institute Symposium. Uh, this is an important day for us each year where we bring together uh, cancer scientists and others investigating the disease uh, in new and emerging areas uh, that we find to be particularly important and highlight some of the important advances that are also taking place here at MIT. And these symposia have covered a range of topics from um, metastasis and nanotechnology, personalized cancer medicine and systems biology. Uh, and today is no exception to the uh, important themes uh, with uh, cancer metabolism being the topic of the day. And that's, of course, a very important area in cancer science. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to the presentations uh, from our speakers today. And I want to thank them all for their contributions in advance. It's also an opportunity for, to for us to highlight some of our own scientists. And we'll be hearing both from David Sabatini and Matthew Vander Heiden today in the program. Uh, and we also use this as an opportunity to invite back former trainees each year, and, and this year that role is filled by Marcia Higgis, who's a faculty member at Harvard Medical School and was once a postdoctoral fellow with Lenny Garenti here at MIT. So again, I'm very much looking forward to today's program, uh, and I'm sure you are as well. Some of you will remember that last year we had a special event symposium. It was a two-day instead of a one-day, and it was a reunion event where we invited back uh, all of the past trainees from the former MIT Center for Cancer Research and used that as an opportunity to allow folks to re revisit their, their old home, which would only be the home of uh, the Cancer Center and then Koch Institute for another several months because we were intending to move on from there uh, to our new home later that year. And of course that has happened. We have formed the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research. Um, the goal of the Koch Institute, as I hope all of you know, is to bring together cancer scientists and engineers to develop new understanding and new technology to solve the longstanding problems of cancer. Uh, and this is an explicit effort to bring together biologists and engineers under one roof. Uh, and the goal really is to uh, integrate and collaborate across disciplines to both advance cancer discoveries, but also to advance new solutions to the long-standing problems of cancer. Uh, and as we had hoped would be the case, uh, we did indeed finish the building. It was actually finished on time, uh, slightly ahead of schedule, actually, and slightly under budget, which is frankly remarkable in this day and age. Uh, and we moved in in late uh, November, December, and then dedicated the building in a couple of day ceremony in March, uh, which caught a lot of attention uh, locally and actually nationally as well, including this front page story in the Boston Globe, uh, which featured not only what we were doing in the Cancer Center Koch Institute, but also uh, the contributions of the main philanthropist behind this effort, David Koch, and some of the special features of the new building as well. I want to point out uh, quickly that this business here of the doctor indicted for six drug fatalities had nothing to do with us. Uh, <laughs> Pretty sure it was a doctor across the river, but, um, <laughs> but this was a fun event, a fun couple of days, and, and uh, one particularly funny moment for me was I was walking along uh, the big tent in the courtyard behind the building, and there was a tour group coming through, as is often the case here on the MIT campus, and the tour guide was explaining the festivities to her uh, group of uh, tourists, and uh, she said, yeah, they're dedicating that building over there, which was given by Coke. Uh, or Pepsi, I don't know what it was, but uh, <clears throat> in fact, the, the, the uh, individual who made it all possible was David Koch, shown here uh, at the festivities, sitting next to the other person who made it possible, who is Susan Hockfield, our president, uh, who has been a huge supporter uh, of bringing together life scientists and engineers uh, across the campus, not limited to cancer, but certainly as it results to uh, the new Koch Institute project. And so in past years, I've shown you uh, artist renderings of what the building would look like. Now I can actually show you what it does look like. This is an actual photograph, slightly photoshopped, I must say. For those of you who are around here, you will notice that the street light has been removed for photographic effect. Uh, but the building is lovely, and uh, the move was very, very successful. Uh, we didn't have any major downtime. All the systems worked well, and the layout and the plans that we worked so hard 
to achieve uh, were also um, uh, clearly uh, working well in terms of fo fostering our science and fostering integration. As I mentioned, the building has a mix of scientists and engineers, and these are the cancer scientists who work in the Koch Institute, uh, the cancer biologists, I should say, from the Department of Biology, uh, and they have been joined by an equal number of talented engineering faculty uh, drawn from across the MIT campus whose names and affiliations are shown here, and you can see that it's a diverse group, individuals who come from chemical engineering, material science, mechanical engineering, and other engineering disciplines. And we've settled in, each of the floors of the building actually has a mix of cancer scientists and engineers uh, working together, and uh, many of the elements of the design of the building really do promote interaction and cause individuals to bump into each other and start that conversation that sparks the new idea, and we're actually now seeing the fruits of that uh, playing out in real time, which is really very exciting and very satisfying for all of us. Um, those of you who are not uh, part of the MIT community may not know exactly where the building is. It's on the eastern edge of campus, not far from here, uh, and it's in a terrific neighborhood surrounding by, surrounded by a lot of very other, other very important buildings uh, at MIT and in, and in uh, biomedical research, including the Whitehead Institute and the Broad Institute, the biology um, home building, chemical engineering, biological engineering, and many more. So we really do feel like we're at the hub of a very important part of our campus. And important to our mission is to reach out and interact with colleagues, not just in these buildings, but really from across the campus. And in fact, we have extramural members of the Koch Institute who almost equal in number the individuals whose laboratories are in the building. And we hope to grow that network uh, still further in the coming years. I won't spend a lot of time this morning describing the Koch Institute, but just to remind you, um, we have five areas of research uh, that uh, capture much, not all, but much of the activity within the research laboratories, including nanotechnology, nanomedicines for cancer, new devices for cancer monitoring and imaging and tracking, a major program in metastasis funded by the Ludwig Foundation, uh, and a group of investigators interested in personalized cancer medicine and drug resistance mechanisms, uh, and another group of investigators interested in cancer immunology and how to use the immune system more effectively to control cancer. And again, these projects are represented by individual research in the individual laboratories, but also in every case, collaborations between laboratories and between disciplines. And collaboration is really at our core. It includes interactions between cancer scientists and engineers in our building and around MIT, uh, but also with other entities, including importantly the National Cancer Institute. We are an NCI designated cancer center and receive a lot of support from the NCI. Um, we also have important interactions with industry. In fact, just yesterday we had our inaugural Science Exchange Day with Johnson & Johnson, which is a corporate partner now of the Koch Institute, uh, and we feel that these interactions are a very important part of our mission to move our discoveries and our new technologies out from our laboratories uh, where they can most rapidly benefit cancer patients. And along those lines, we do want to focus on patients, and because we don't have uh, a hospital here and we don't take care of cancer patients here at MIT, it's important for us to reach out to other centers that do and we're fortunate that in Boston we have many such centers, uh, including the Mass General Hospital and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where we have already established uh, collaborative interactions with cancer scientists and clinicians um, from their laboratories, working with scientists and engineers from our laboratories. Uh, and this is very exciting for us to see. And recently, just at the end of last year, we formalized this pro project under the heading of the Bridge Project, which is a formal interaction between the NCI-designated cancer center here at MIT and the NCI-designated cancer center at Harvard, which is called the, uh, the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center, and it actually includes Dana-Farber, MGH, Brigham and Women's, and in fact, seven uh, entities that joined together under the heading of the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center. And so with the Bridge Project, uh, we hope to attract even more great ideas uh, that will bring together scientists, engineers, and clinicians, clinical investigators, uh, to bring discoveries and technologies as quickly as we can to new solutions. Uh, so before I close, I will um, just show you a few more images. I've shown you this one from the outside, and I encourage you, if you haven't been to the Koch Institute already, to come by for a visit or, in fact, a tour. Um, the laboratories are very nice, and also on the first floor, we have a lot of elements to sort of introduce you to um, the 
development of the Koch Institute with respect to um, a long timeline of advances in science and engineering here at MIT and noteworthy discoveries shown uh, in this part of the uh, entryway. Uh, just under that on the floor is a mosaic which shows the position of the Koch Institute with respect to the MIT campus. And then along the, call, the, hall, the uh, corridor which runs along Main Street is a series of art and educational exhibits all based in science uh, to teach you about the kind of work that we do and hopefully inspire the next generation of cancer researchers. This is actually a mural created by some Media Lab trained artists based on data generated from Mike Yaffe and Forrest White's laboratory. It's really quite interesting and I think quite beautiful. Uh, these are some science display cases that you might find otherwise at a science museum to teach specific stories about research that's taking place at the Koch Institute. Um, and further down the uh, corridor is a series of large format uh, prints of images from our laboratories and others actually that highlight really the very interesting and very informative things you can do uh, with various types of imaging technology. And again, the goal here is to capture people's attention, capture people's imagination, and hopefully inspire them to get involved in this kind of research. And importantly, this part of the building is open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Anybody can walk in and experience and hopefully enjoy uh, these exhibits. And so um, I'll stop there and uh, encourage you to stay abreast of the developments in the Koch Institute, stay involved. Uh, you can log on and read about new things happening in the Koch Institute from our website. Uh, and uh, again, I thank you for being here this morning and participating in this symposium. And now I'll turn things over to uh, Matt Vanderheide. And Matt was one of the two organizers this year, and I appreciate very much his contributions to uh, putting the program together and organizing today's events. He was joined by David Sabatini in that effort, and I'm appreciative to him as well. And I also want to thank a very large number of people, actually, who contributed um, often behind the scenes to make this event possible and to uh, arrange all the various things that will happen today. Cindy Quince and the whole headquarters office, the executive director's office, all the administrative staff have pitched in wonderfully, uh, as they do every year, to make this uh, symposium successful. And this year, I'd like to especially thank Lori Spindler uh, and Sarah Hufford, who went out of their way and really uh, went above and beyond their normal uh, responsibilities in the Koch uh, and devoted a tremendous amount of effort uh, to make this uh, event so great. So let's take a moment to appreciate them for all that they've done. And with that, I'll turn things over to Matt Vanderheiden, uh, Assistant Professor in Biology in the Koch Institute, uh, to take it from here. <laughs>